Hi, how you guys doing? My name is Ishmael. I'm with Ask Eve Ministries. Um, I'm excited to share this message with you guys. And uh, I welcome everybody who is atheist, Latter-day Saint, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, Pentecostals, Apostolics, whatever denomination. Please get your Bibles. Um, if you're not from a non-denominational uh, non church, from whatever congregation, I hope you get receive this blessing out of what the Bible is trying to say here to you today. It's not going to be a very long message. I'm not going to sit here for an hour, as you see probably down below how many minutes. When I try to keep it under 40 minutes. And uh, But before we do, let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Dear Heavenly Father, allow your Holy Spirit to be here with us. That he guides my lips to teach these individuals what your word is trying to tell us here. Forgive us if we have offended you or misrepresented you. Please help us to be better. Thank you for your example that your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Thank you in the name of Jesus. We ask all this. Amen. So, now that we have prayed, I would ask you this question. What type of stone was the Ten Commandments made out of and why? Very important question. Some of you guys might know. Don't say the word out loud so nobody else listens. And if somebody else next to you never heard this before, don't give them the answer. Okay? So, what we're going to do is open up your Bibles to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus 24. Get a notepad. Get your Bibles out. Your app out. Whatever translation you have. I have uh, seen multiple translations on this same uh, subject. I have shared this with the Jehovah's Witnesses. I have shared this with uh, Pentecostals. I have shared with, with Pioneer Adventists. I have shared this with uh, regular Seventh-day Adventists, uh, Baptists. Um, and most everybody that I present this to, they're blown away. So I hope you, as everybody else that I have shared this message to, are, is blown away as well. Because, of course, we're going to be blown away because it's coming from the Word, the 66 books. We are going to use the, 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 the 39 books first before we get into the 27. So the Bible says in Exodus 24, the first three verses, And he said unto Moses, Come up to me. Come up to the Lord, thou, or come up to Jehovah, thou, and Aaron, and Nadab, and Abihu, and the seventy elders of Israel. Worship ye off afar, or off afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Okay, there you see a picture of Moses going up the mount. And Moses came and told the people all these words, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice. I would highly recommend to say this every time you read the word. This is what the Bible says. All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. The Bible says Timothy uh, had a letter from Paul that said, All scripture is profitable for doctrine to reproof. For correction, um, if you see that in in, uh, uh, in one of the letters of uh, Paul to Timothy. So, all scripture, it's very important that you see that. So, here uh, we see that Moses is getting ready to do what? Well, let's see what it says in the bottom, if we continue to read. Exodus 24, 9 through 12 says, Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the seventy elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. What did they do? Saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, and it was it, it were pavement work of sapphire stone, as it was, as it were the body of heaven in the clearness. There you see in the picture that the Lord is standing on blue, and it was an. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, they laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone 
and the law and commandments which I have written, and thou mayst teach them. What's happening here? Well, what's happening here is what happened actually today. When there's somebody who gets married, after the ceremony, what do they do? They go have a meal, right? That's what they do. After two businesses get together, what do they do? When two businesses join together, what they're doing? They're making a covenant. They're sealing a seal, right? They share a meal. Uh, they eat and drink. Just like the Israelites did with Moses, they're with the Lord to seal the covenant, right? So the Bible says in uh, Exodus 32, 16, that the, how, the, the Ten Commandments were the work of the Lord. Here we're going a little too fast. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting too excited. Um, so here in Exodus 32, uh, 16, it says, And the tablets were the work of God, and written writings were the writings of God, graven upon the tablets of stone. Right? So that's what happened. That when Moses received the Ten Commandments, they were the work of the Lord. And Ezekiel describes a little bit more of his throne as we see that the payment was made out of sapphire stone. And in context, the only stone was sapphire stone. So keep that in mind. Okay? So Ezekiel 126, it says, And above the firmament, okay, there, that was over the heads of the likeness of what? A throne, as they appeared of sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as an appearance of a man above it. I believe, because I have the 66 books, I, I believe that's Christ. So we see that the pavements where the Lord was standing was made out of sapphire stone. We also see that Ezekiel describes the throne of God of being of sapphire stone. Here in Ezekiel 10, 1, hopefully you're taking notes or not, just review and pause. Right? For those that already know or those that don't know your Bible pretty well. But that's why it's important to always, just like the Bereans in Acts 17.11, that these people were studying the scriptures daily to see if what they were preaching was true. One of the things I would highly recommend is study the scriptures daily. Why? To see if what I'm saying is true. Don't rely on me. Rely on the Holy Spirit who is your teacher. The person who reminds you of what the Word of God is. So, very fascinating to see that the throne of God, the platform, the pavement, is made out of sapphire. Now, the colors, there were some colors that the high priest, who is our high priest? Jesus is our high priest. In Exodus 28, we read, And they shall make an ephod of gold and blue and purple and scarlet, and twine linen, and fine twine linen, and the cunning work. In verse 8, And the curious griddle of the ephod which is upon shall be of the same according to the work thereof, even as gold and blue and purple scarlet of fine twine linen. And in verse 31 it says, Thou shalt make them the robe of an ephod of blue. What color is the throne of God? Right, blue, because it's made out of sapphire. So making of sapphires must have been very important for the high priest to use it. I believe it's in the book of Hebrews that when... Uh, uh, Paul wrote it, he said that everything that uh, Moses made was a reflection of heavenly things. So for those that know that what I'm saying to be true, that it was a reflection of what was in heaven, right? So everything inside the throne, I mean inside the tabernacle, and those colors, not only on the high priest, but they were also inside the tabernacle. But it wasn't only the high priest that had to wear something in order to be set apart. There's a story in uh, Numbers 15, okay? Numbers 15, starting in verse 32, 
And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, what happened? They were in the wilderness. They found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. What day? Saturday, the seventh day. That is the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him before Moses and Aaron and unto the congregation. And they put him in the ward because they what it was not declared what should they what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he did die. And the Lord commanded Moses. That's what the Lord commanded Moses. So what happened here? On the Sabbath day, there was a gentleman who was gathering sticks. So there was a pain there because of something that occurred. And there was something that had to happen to that gentleman. So the people would remind themselves what not to do. Now, he gave them a sign. He gave them something so they can look upon. This is what the Bible says that the Lord told Moses. It says, the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bind them that they make them fringes or teeth seats in the borders of their garment throughout their generations, and that they that put upon the fringes of their borders of ribbon of blue. Wow, isn't that interesting that the color blue appears again? Not only that the sapphire stone, the throne of God, but uh, the Israelites needed to put something on their clothing just like the high priest had the color blue, right? With gold and purple and scarlet, right? Scarlet, purple, blue, and gold. And it shall be unto you the fringe that ye might look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart or your own eyes after which ye used to go a whoring, or to prostitute yourselves like other translations, that ye may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Right? To be your God, I am the Lord your God. That's what the Bible says. Doesn't that kind of sound familiar with like the first verse of the Ten Commandments? And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God, thy God, which have brought you, had brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Exodus 20 verses 1 and 2. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Verse 3. So that's what the Bible says when it comes to um, if they broke a law, he wanted to give them to re make them remind, to remind them of something, of pain, right? So when they looked upon the tzitzit or the fringes, they can remember of the gentleman who was picking up sticks on the sab uh, on the sa on the Sabbath day, right? Well, when I was reading that, it. I thought about a friend of mine, or well, a gentleman, not a friend, I haven't met him personally, but I know he's in the same industry that I work in, and his name is Cesar Rodriguez. Cesar Rodriguez is a well-known person in the industry I work in. He is a seven-figure earner, and he gives a very powerful presentation about being ten times bolder. He teaches the people in the karate technique to be 10 times bold, to be successful in the industry. Okay? So what he did was he made a rubber band. Right? So every time they wanted to speak to somebody, they would snap it back and it would create pain. So that way, when they looked upon it, there was a pain attached to it so it can hit their nervous system so they can take action. Doesn't that kind of sound familiar? That the Lord told the Israelites that when they look upon the tzitzit, it will remind them of what happened, right? Of that gentleman who broke the Sabbath day. So that tzitzit is attached to the Sabbath. I was blown away when I 
when I realized it, even though I was brought up understanding it, but it actually made more sense when you actually do research. Bible says, seek and you shall find, right? Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Well, that's what the Bible says in Exodus 31, 16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. This is what it says about the Lord, right? And he gave unto Moses when he had made and ended the covenant upon the Mount Sinai, two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with his finger. Right? Totally, totally blew my mind away that there were so many things that I seen in the scripture that were attached to each other that made sense, right? Isaiah said here little and there little, right? Now, so far we've seen that the pavement was sapphire stone. The throne of God was sapphire stone. The high priest needed to wear um, a certain type of color that was scarlet, purple, gold, and blue, right? And we see that the Israelites, they attached that blue so they can remember of the pain of what happened to the individual that was stoned for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. Now we go to Revelation 17, right? Revelation 17 says, And one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits upon, or who sits by many waters, some say upon, with her, the kings of the earth committed adultery in the habitations of the earth. They were intoxicated with the wine of her adultery. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemy names and had seven heads and ten horns. Here's the key. The woman was what? The woman was dressed. This is what the Bible says. It's not my lips. Remember that the high priest had an order to dress, to be different from all the nations. And the Lord said, I want you to be like this so you're not like the world and you don't prostitute yourselves to the world. Hosea even said this, that when he married the prostitute, because she would do what she had to do, her job, he would go and buy her back, bring her back to the Lord, right? Just like uh, well, that's what the Lord told uh, Hosea. I want you to know how my people are being with me. Now, this is what the woman is dressed like. She's dressed in purple, scarlet, and glittery of gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abomination things and filthy of her adulteries. Adul adultery. Uh, of being in adultery. Right? Well, this is a true church versus the false church. The true church has scarlet and the false church has scarlet. The true church has purple and the, the false church has purple. The true church has gold and the false church has gold. The true church has blue and the true church has, I mean the false church has no blue. Why? Because they have no law. Specifically, they have no rest. They have no Sabbath or Shabbat. That's what the false church doesn't have. Things that you may know, but you did not understand it until today. I bet you didn't know that 70% of people like the color blue. Police officers, why do they wear blue? Or they're called the men in blue, right? The ocean is blue. The earth is called the blue planet. The meaning of a true blue is a person who's faithful. And the sky is also blue. The Bible says in Matthew, 
There we go. In, in, in Matthew 5, 17 through 18, it says, Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy the law, right? But to fulfill. That means to act, to show you the way. That's what the Bible says. The Son came to do the will of the Father. I come to do the will. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, my sister, and my mother. That's what the Bible says. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall know and know me in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Interesting, interesting, interesting. A few years back, there was this gentleman on TV everywhere. He was preaching and telling everybody to be careful with what you drink, be careful with what's in your food, and the FDA went after this individual. I hope my video doesn't get taken down because of this information. But this is what Kevin Trudeau says. Kevin Trudeau says in his book, he says, in the book, Natural Cures, they don't want you to know about, Kevin Trudeau writes a few paragraphs about the importance of rest. Without proper rest, the cells are not given opportunity to recharge and rejuvenate. Tired cells cannot eliminate toxic toxins efficiently. It is also during rest time most where most of the healing takes place. Trudeau disguise, describes the ideal time of rest as the time in which the sun has set. Then he explains why Sabbath is the best time. Now, this individual is not a Sabbath keeper. He's a Scientologist, according to my research online. He was a Roman Catholic and then converted to Scientology. He says each week, this is what he writes, a lunar cycle, or according to the sun, moon, and stars, occurs, okay, starting at sundown every Friday, ending at sundown every Saturday. This time, this is what he says, period is absolute the most ideal time for the body to recharge and rejuvenate. That is amazing information. As for me, to being, I grew up in a church that actually believes that the Sabbath is the day of rest, right? So growing up, but me having the mind of my dad that he likes to go step by step on information to see if these things were so, like in Acts 17, 11, right? That these individuals were studying the scriptures daily. So I am a type of person that if somebody sends me information, Right? No matter what, of things, of topics, things that will make me grow, motivational speakers, uh, information on health, uh, et cetera, et cetera, I find it fascinating that I get to come across things like this that help me that, wow, the Lord had said this since the beginning of time. And today people are reusing this information. I can go, I can share like multiple uh, studies of things like this that share that the evidence of what the Bible says is true. So many people, so many Christians, you can ask them, is, does God exist? Yes. Why? Well, I prayed about it and uh, I felt that he existed. No, I need evidence. I need evidence that the Bible can show me. Evidence like these, like, um, like I, I can go, but we'll save it for another video. But, because I don't want to lose track of the subject here. Of the false church and the true church. What church are you a part of? The false church or the true church? The false church that has scarlet, purple, and gold, but no blue? Or are you part of the church that the Lord established through Peter that has the colors of scarlet, purple, gold, and blue? The true church, the church that will take you to the glorification stage where the Lord will bring us up to meet him in the clouds because he is coming soon. And this message has woken you up. 
Praise the Lord that He has woken you up through this message. Please subscribe. Comment below if you got a blessing out of the message. Go back and see all the verses from the beginning at Exodus 24 from the payment to Ezekiel showing the throne of God to Numbers to seeing that the, the not only the high priest but we were supposed to have something to remind us of His law. I say all this in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you guys got a message out of this, a blessing for your success in your walk with Jesus. I love you guys all. I'll see you on the next video.